inches low and an inch to the left from your first one. A little bit low. Thank First you, Cliff. Yeah, well, yeah. First hands in any animal? Down. Day one? I hit him good. behind, from behind in the back. A little bit far, but that's where it would have come out. So you'll probably find a little bit far forward in there. This was the second shot? I think so, yeah. You think? Or is that? Yeah, very nice bull. Nice, thick, heavy bases. Yeah, he was by himself there on the yeah, all by himself. side of the hill. Very nice, thick bases. Yeah. He's got nice, long tips as well. He's a solid 20 inches. It's very nice. That's about, nice as, about as good as they come. That's great. He's just there, a lone bull by himself. Yeah, just all by himself. I've been working for 30 years, and this was my goal to come to Africa for almost 30 days and hunt. Just to forget work and come to what I've always heard to be one of the best hunting areas in the world, the Salu of Tanzania. This is the first morning we've been out here. We've already tracked a few zebra herds, seen a few Lechtenstein and the Heart of Beast. Um, but we're out here really for cats these three weeks and I've got what I've been told is the best cat hunter in Africa, Cliff Walker. And Cliff uh, has been uh, dragging me through and this is just his first morning so he doesn't really know what he's in store for. All these other cats in the past are gonna be nothing compared to dragging my rear end around here. But we were driving around this morning and uh, we tried to put a few stocks on some zebra primarily for leopard bait you were driving along for the first time I spotted the animal, I think first, a few, along with some of our African traffickers. It wasn't a very long shot, and I didn't do that great a shot, to be honest with you. So I'm just now warming up, but uh, I'm going to let Cliff here, who's uh, been kind enough to help me these few weeks, to give a little overview on this. Okay. Yeah, like Tim was saying, we're in the LU4 concession of the Salu Game Reserve, uh, which is kind of situated in the middle of the whole Salu Game Reserve. Uh, we've got a couple major rivers surrounding us, the Mbaragandu, the Luwego. So, uh, yeah, this is where we are. And, yeah, day one, we obviously off to cats, lion and leopard. Our main thing is getting bait. So this guy is going to be really good for bait. Uh, we <coughs> turned down a couple younger bulls. This is a very nice Lichtenstein's harder beast. Very nice bull, very thick bases, long tips. Uh, so he's a nice trophy as well. And uh, we're going to skin him now and put some nice baits up so they'll Hang be good. How many baits uh, will this make? Four. We're basically caught to him. For yeah. leopard primarily? For leopard, yeah. yeah for, uh, you know, the problem with the lions is lions will finish this so quickly. So right. we'll put right. some leopard baits up. But yeah, that was a good spot by you. I didn't even know what you were looking at at first. Yeah. <laughs> good spot, bad shot. No, so, hey, he's down, so that's all that down. counts. It counted. But yeah, I know. Well done, and that's great. Thank you very much. Yeah, Appreciate well it. Done. Cliff, thanks. <laughs> and then, all right, here we are with the whole yeah. team. In Africa, you just don't do it on your own. You can't just do it with Cliff Walker. There's a bunch of people back in camp. Chris is behind the camera with us once again from South Africa when we first met him. So he's going to be videoing us the entire time we're here in Tanzania. But a lot of the backbone of the hunting and eyes, more than anything, are our friends here to the right. And I'm going to introduce them to, uh, and your name is? Christy. 
Faustin. Ababu Mole. Ababu Mole. Patrick. Patrick. And the game Lawrence. warden. Lawrence. Lawrence? Yeah, yeah. And then J Jason. 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 Jason from Zimbabwe as well. So we've got a great uh, African lineup here. If they can drag me through the forest for three weeks and make me successful, they've, they've uh, accomplished a big goal. Well, we're back on the trail. We've seen, uh, after shooting that uh, heart of beast, white bearded uh, wildebeest, a bunch more heart of beast. Saw an elephant a few minutes ago. Now the uh, cliff and a couple of trackers are looking for leopard tracks to hang some of these uh, quarter uh, Lichtenstein uh, heart of beast baits in the trees. So these guys, we've been tracking uh, all morning, tracking through this thick forest. As you can see, it's not wide open like we were at Eklund. This is pretty much how it is the whole time, hilly and very thick. So getting a shot is not the easiest thing in the world and getting a good shot is even more difficult. And even making the shot is very, very difficult. Uh, but we got great trackers and they've been tracking animals through these uh, high grass. Uh, uh, Jason, the one guy driving with us, the other guy from Zimbabwe, has been carrying a 577 for any uh, un unexpected uh, K buffalo, hippo, lion, anything that could uh, all of a sudden appear out of the brush. That makes me feel a little better having that kind of backup. And then we've got the uh, the game guy that you have to have with you in Tanzania who's got some kind of semi-automatic weapon which is a little unnerving having him lurking around uh, not knowing if he's on safe or not knowing uh, who he's pointing out half the time. But we're looking for leopard. What a nice leopard trick. He's been walking on the road, but he's, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's walked on top of him. So it could be a while. Yeah, so he's obviously came through here maybe yesterday or early last night. But at least it's good to know that he's in yeah. the area. Okay. This is what it takes to do a leopard hunt. At least what it takes for cliff. Cliff's in the tree, 20, 30 feet high, I'm guessing. You can see the quarter of the heart of beef that we just hung. They just hung. That's cliff in the tree. Um, we're now lining where the shot would come from with the sun to our back. Uh, and we'll be checking this bait now periodically, probably every day. Uh, you've got water down here in this ravine. you got to have water and a bait. I saw you trimming all the branches off for a clearer shot, but why'd you come back up with some smaller branches and cover the bait? The ones we cut up here is the angle of our blind. Right. It's going to be up on that end tail over there. So uh, obviously you want a nice clear shot. The branches we've put there to cover the bait, that's for the vultures. Right, right. Because if they see a, yeah. a bait, they just it's cover it. Sounds yeah. logical. So the leopard will come typically along this. this yeah, this is, it's quite a nice, you know, it's nice thick cover, there's water. Right. Uh, this is just ideal for a leopard for hunting. Right. So right. he'll come along here, pick up the scent. You threw some gut pile down yeah. here at the bait. The guys got it, you can see some of the guys have got some here. Right. I've been out here, got the meat here, nice to Cutting a path here through the bait, to the bait, so you can get a clear angle shot. Doing it now before you make any noise after a leopard hits this. But the bait, you can't see the bait, but you can see the green leaves. They've just covered like uh, Cliff said to keep the vultures off of it.
Oh, I thought I hit him pretty hard. He bled a lot at first. And now he just got drops. So I mean, I obviously hit him hard enough. I got too excited. hit that hyena running up the hill through the high grass. And I got too cocky and I was high-fiving myself. Thought I dropped him there running up the hill. A lot of blood initially, quite a bit of blood trail. Then we found where he laid down and a lot of blood came out. But now it's just been spotted, so I'm afraid the laughing hyena has the last laugh, it looks like. So now we're wasting our time tracking this wounded hyena when we should be hanging leopard baits. Three different types of hyena, the spotted, the brown, and the strut. The one we get here in Tanzania is the spotted. But uh, yeah, it looked like quite a nice, you know, big yeah. fairly big body. Right. To tell male or female straight off the bat like that's almost right. impossible. Right. But we'll just see if the guys can pick up pick this track up. again. And in this sand like this, it's actually very difficult to follow. Track, a blood trail. Or especially an animal that doesn't leave a heavy Mancos, roasted pork, chop, conkers sauce with plain rice, vegetable have carrots and a cabbage, dessert, gelatin, orange, cream, tea or coffee. Hot? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We'll try and see if we can't pick up some buffalo tracks in the morning, uh, maybe a zebra or wildebeest, and then towards midday, check those baits. And you can find them pretty easy off the GPS, or you just kind of no. uh, most of them just off your head. Yeah, I'll just remember. Did you see any catches? Yeah. Oh, Day two, we hunted hard, at least for me. I don't know about these guys. They worked twice as hard as I did, and I, I felt a little bit, but I feel good this morning. And uh, we got one down yesterday with four baits up in the air. And another goal is another bait, whether it's a leopard or a lion bait. So we will see what we see today. Hopefully we get one more down today. It's a very, very rare animal. This. It's called a pangolin. Really? <clears throat> oh, these scales are, right? Eh? They roll into a ball when they get stressed. The camera shot. Really? There's a called a pangolin, and it's somewhat similar to our armadillo, but it's got a tail that's twice almost, or at least the length of its own body, and it's a lot more heavily armed. And uh, Chris had told me they bring good luck to the Africans, and sure enough, the uh, game warden told me when we were standing there looking at it, he goes, good luck, and he smiled, and he gave me the thumbs up. 
So that was interesting. They said they only see those about every five years. So maybe that will bring us luck uh, the rest of the day. We haven't seen anything yet this morning, so we need a little. And Yeah, we're burning that elephant dung to keep the tootsie flies off of us. They were getting a little worse this morning. Yesterday they weren't too bad. Uh, and that smoke just uh, runs them off, supposedly. Some more, yeah. And uh, I think I smell worse than the elephant dung, so <laughs> between the two of making me smell not as bad and keeping the flies off us is a good strategy. Day two of the safari, but really it's the 48th hour because we hunted this one to the last minute. We've been hunting all day long. Uh, as we did yesterday, we started outside around 6.30 and we didn't see too much today. We checked our leopard baits and uh, didn't have any activity. We drove down to another area along a river and uh, didn't see anything really. And we just worked all day. We never stopped for lunch. We kept driving or walking um, and uh, saw a bunch of harder beasts. We've already got a nice harder beast, so we've passed those up. And we were primarily out for any other, other species, but uh, zebra being high on the list just for more bait uh, for the leopards. And I'm guessing it's maybe an hour or 45 minutes before dark. And uh, these guys, as usual, tapped us and said they saw something. I can never say if they're saying zebra or zimba, simba. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's always a little bit of a debate for me, but uh, fortunately they saw it and uh, there was about four of them, one, this one big male uh, and then three females and uh, it's through thick, thick trees, thick brush, really hard to get an angle at it and Cliff, I had my scope this time on 10 so I wouldn't mess around because he's pretty far out there and couldn't pick him up right away and Cliff luckily had still had his naked eye on him and uh, moved over to the pointed me over to the left and I picked him up and I had one small alley to pick up his shoulder because people in America that think zebras are easy to hunt and they're just like a horse is totally wrong <laughs> it's like going to the Kentucky Derby and having your eyes shut the entire race for like except for the last two seconds you open your eyes and then they're gone uh, so that's how they've been I didn't know if we would get one they've been hard to find and uh Cliff, why don't you tell them a little bit uh, what type this is compared to what Morgan and I shot a back-to-back -back last summer in South Africa. I shot one, and and Chris was right on us filming, and, and Morgan wanted to go along and bring the 270, and she dropped one just dead in its tracks right with me. So that was a great time for a father-daughter. And Morgan, I wish you were here with me because there was three standing here, and you could have done it again. <laughs> one day we will. But Cliff, why don't you tell them what kind of... Yeah, Tim, yeah, it was a very slow day, but uh, again, very good shot. Uh, was, it was quite hard through all the brush. But this is just your common uh, uh, birchall zebra. You get many different types of zebra throughout Africa. Uh, you get the gravies up in uh, Ethiopia and Kenya. You get the Hartman's Mountain Zebra. And then this is just the common birchalls. They do vary in different books as opposed to one you get in South Africa. might be the straightforward birchall zebra. And then some books will say these are the East African Birchall or the, or, or the uh, Maasai Birchall. But they're all pretty much straightforward, the Birchall Zebra. But yeah, nice stallion. Uh, we'll take him back to camp, get him skinned out, and we've got four more, maybe even five nice leopard baits. That's great. So what do you guys have to say? These guys, once again, did it. They had the eyes. They've been stalking, tracking hard all day. This isn't going to be the luck. The luck's the leopard. So we're, we're <laughs> hanging on to that luck still. We're not done. <laughs> Well done, good shooting. Thank you. Well, we just shot a a diker, which is a very small African antelope. First time I pulled the trigger through this thick, thick brush, click, no bullet. They're pretty tough for the guys to get. They never stop running. Instead of leopard hunting, this uh, diker charged us from out of the brush, and they said it was a nice one, seriously. And uh, I really didn't have them high on my list, but I've always seen a lot of other African hunters that have shot these small bush antelope and I'm gonna let uh, Cliff here give a little background because I don't know much. 
Yeah, Tim, basically this is the East African bush diker. Uh, you get the Western bush diker up in Cameroon and the Southern bush diker down in South Africa and Zimbabwe. And uh, a lot of guys come a long way just to get these little guys because they're high on the list. So, yeah, I mean, to get one to stand still long enough as we did today, that's, that's a bonus. So we, gotta, we definitely have to take that opportunity and shoot one. So yeah, it's a very nice one. Thank you. Yeah, it was a fluke. I, I saw him, like I said a minute ago, on my scope. Hard to find him. Found him. Had it on 10 power, and he was probably only 75, 50 yeah. yards max. But through the thick brush, low down, hard to find. Finally picked him up. He was behind a, behind a bunch of brush, and by the time I could find him, I finally pulled off the trigger, and I didn't have a bullet, which is a good lesson for me on this other stuff <laughs> I'm hunting. So had a bullet in the... Uh, in the magazine, but not in the chamber, so I had to rebolt. Fortunately, he didn't run off. He moved ahead a little ways, and as he was coming out of a clearing, I could just get his shoulder, and he ran off, but fortunately, we got him. So uh, we're one for every day we've hunted one animal. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. We've been watching them for oh, 30, 45 minutes. There's a group down there of maybe 20. Uh, I think they could charge us within minutes, so I'm not going down to the river. Chris and I will stay up here from the top. But basically, it's supposedly a big bull, mainly for lion bait. Few false charges. Still kind of got your heart going though. Uh, one almost saw it came out of the bank, out of the river. This would have been interesting. I think Chris got those. He had to be there to fully appreciate it. Jason had just said he'd never been charged, but that was as close I guess you can get.
Kiko ahí. ¿Y por qué boco? That was too wild. Uh, that was going beyond the call of duty for all those guys. Jason, I mean, they waited out. First, uh, Cliff said, don't get over your knees. Before I knew it, Jason was up to his neck. And if you'd seen that tempo charge three or four times beforehand, uh, that was a little, a little risky. Well, it's day five, and you can see what we've got. Uh, Yesterday was a great day too. We saw three different herds of buffalo and saw our first uh, lion, lioness on one of the uh, leopard baits. Uh, I kind of had it out at the end of the day, dragging a little bit or a lot. So I can tell Cliff and the other guys decided let's take the fat American down to the river <laughs> for an easy hunt. Fortunately, they left me on the bank, uh, but I think they had the uh, toughest hippo extraction they've ever had. We had uh, seen these hippos down along the river uh, not that far from camp, two miles or so, and uh, we went down to this one big pool and there was about 18 of them in there and uh, judging the male uh, hippo is a little tough. I couldn't have done it at all. And um, Cliff, once again, and Jason over here, we'll get him in, in here in a minute, uh, brought me up on them and uh, kept an eye on which one was the right one to shoot and told me where to shoot it because it's not like any other animal. I'll let, uh, let uh, Cliff explain uh, how we did that. Yeah, Tim, uh, basically like when we got here this morning, uh, we saw uh, like about 18, 20 hippo. And to tell a bull, it's, it's not an exact science. It can be very difficult. But uh, you're basically looking for the lumps on either side of its mouth. You can even see there, you can see how it's got those lumps on its mouth. Uh, it's got the long whiskers. The shape of the head, a very bulky, sort of ugly head, lots of scars. You see all the scars right. on him here from fighting. Right. Those are general indications as to if it's a, a you know, a big mature bull. Uh, a bull like this, which is, is about as big as a hippo, will get, you know, about three and a half thousand pounds. Uh, you know, very nice big uh, body. So we'll go and hit his teeth as well, you know, very nice teeth, about eight, nine inches sticking out. So you'll probably have about double that inside. Uh, so yeah, a nice trophy and uh, we'll use this for line bait, four line baits, we'll cut them, we'll, we'll, we'll basically cut them in half and in half and uh, take his neck for maybe a leopard bait. So yeah, it's all good, very good shot, uh, right, right in the ear, which is pretty much what you want, it's got to be a perfect brain shot to get them because they're in the water. Uh, as you'll see on the video, getting that brain shot can be difficult. Perfect. Yeah, but that was the easy part. Uh... I hope you saw some of it coming down the river. They uh, had to roll it. You can't pull it. Had to roll it uh, about, again, a mile or so at least. It's probably five miles in effort. <laughs> and uh, they thought they'd kind of hit the easy part and they hit a little bit of a deep section, went off a little bit of a ledge and all of a sudden there was a pool there of about 12 feet. One of the uh, African guys did the double arm dog swim to get out of it and he wasn't making it. He didn't, he wasn't moving. <laughs> Colin had to go in. He's trying to pull the hippo and went in for the uh, poor guy that thought he had just seen his last day. Jason uh, right here was the one who took the riskiest part. It was uh, submerged when we first shot it. He wouldn't float up. Normally it floats up in 20 minutes, maybe 30, max an hour. And we kept trying to spook off all the other hippos so somebody could go in there in the water and see if it was caught on a tree limb or something. We shot at the hippos through 50 rocks at them and they weren't going anywhere. They were going under. And then when I saw Jason go out there, Cliff's yelling, don't go over your knees. 
all of a sudden uh, Jason dropped down to his neck almost in the water, which was too much for me. I mean, I, he didn't have to go that far. And now we got some more lion bait. Having a good time in Africa. Thank you guys. That's unbelievable, guys. It's a very nice day with it. That was good. Yeah. That was a great guy. These are the guys, again, that uh, have been killing themselves all week. Some of the hardest working people I've ever been around. And uh, if it wasn't for them picking these things out and seeing them, I'd be kind of a goose egg right now. But uh, Cliff, why don't you tell them about this sable for a second? Sure, Tim. Uh, you know, but it wasn't too long ago, and SCI decided that uh, these sable were actually DNA tested to be different sable to the rest of Africa. So they called them the Roosevelt sable. And uh, as far as Roosevelt sable go, this one that you've shot here is an amazing trophy. It's about 41 inches, or well, we've just measured it 41. And that's, uh, yeah, we're very, very lucky there. So well done on that. And then, yeah, it's, it's easy to point them out, but through this thick brush, as you, as you saw, that shot you had was a difficult shot. So, you know, I think it's team effort. So yeah, it was a great. Well, yeah, well done on that. Great Very deal. Good. Thanks a lot, everybody. Yeah. Jason. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mom. That's pretty. No, it's very nice. Very nice ball. They're beautiful. It's uh, day six and we've been on a roll for the last day and a half. We we're honestly just going to be checking leopard and lion baits this morning and sure enough the first leopard bait we uh, came across there was a male and a female that had hit it that the game plan is to come back this uh, midday and put a blind up and sit in it this afternoon. But as we were going to the next uh, blind, we'd seen a couple just fleeting, barely seeing them, not many bulls really, but uh, a bull and I want to say four cows jumped out and um, couldn't get a shot initially and they kept working their way down through this valley kind of back towards the very end where you could get one last look at them and once again, I really couldn't pick them up. They're so hard to see down in here. And I had to move my scope down to 10 to seven. And even with that, Cliff is kind of being my, uh, you know, directional heat seeking <laughs> missile guide here more than just a physical guide. And 
he kept saying he could see how it's lined up. He'd say, really, yeah, left, 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 because I didn't think it was that far. And he, he honestly helped me pick him up where he was, because when I first saw him, this gray coat blends in with these rocks that he's laying on. And honestly, when I first saw him, I thought it was just another rock until I zoomed in hard on him and, and saw that was him and had one second to shoot. Fortunately, did another good shot. And uh, is it East African kudu? Is that how you yeah, say? Yeah, East African great to kudu. So we shot, you know, f several in South Africa last summer. Miriam shot the biggest one of all of us. Brooke shot one. I shot one. But how does that differ from this kudu? Tim, the, the kudu in South Africa, obviously, as you know, is called the Southern Great Kudu. Uh, the other one in South Africa is the Eastern Cape Great Kudu. Mm. Uh, then as you move up north in Africa, you get this guy, which is the East African Great Kudu. Uh, you get the Lesser Kudu, the Abyssinian Great Kudu, the Western Kudu. Uh, as you go, keep going up in Africa. But for Tanzania, this uh, East African kudu, very nice bull. You can see his nice ivory tips, you know, indicating that he's very mature. His base is very nice and worn down. He's probably about 46, 47 inches, which is very nice. So overall, nice, nice trophy. I well, sure appreciate it. Mm, Thank you well very done. much. It was great. the leopard hit and then I'm uh, going to build that blind that makes you fall in that long grass there and the bait's down here in this tree down on this creek and I'm going to, as soon as I can see it, I'm going to put my binoculars on it to get an exact distance um, because we're going to build this, these guys are going to build this blind. If I take them till one or so they thought and then we're going to go back to camp for the first time this day and come back out here at 4.30 and hope this big male leopard comes. If not, we're going to come back out here in the morning and try to do it then. Another quarter, probably of a sable that I shot last night. Uh, where this, these two leopards hit. So that's once again Cliff in the tree, 20, 30 feet up. And uh, we're about finished with our blind. We're going to come back here at about 4:30 and sit until probably 6:30. Well, we're back. Uh, we're back empty-handed, uh, but we had a perfect setup. Had a couple leopards in there, sat in the blind motionless for two and a half, three hours. I didn't move an inch. Um, never had anything came in. Thought it was gonna rain, but it didn't. Uh, but that's just part of our leopard hunting. I'd have been shocked if I'd have got one the first day, to be honest with you, out there in, in the baits. And we caught up with the guys uh, that weren't with us checking the other baits. And they had another leopard hit another bait, the farthest one, of course, back from camp. Uh, and that linus we'd seen in the dry creek bread bed a couple days ago that got up after a leopard bait, how we don't know, uh, came back and ate that entire bait. So uh, tomorrow's another day, and we will keep after them. Stepped out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that.
All right, this is the ninth day. Uh, we had two days of strikeouts. Had great hunts, great stocks, up on everything. Just couldn't get a shot. Uh, I was getting frustrated. I was starting to push, uh, surprisingly. And uh, Chris was the brunt of the push. Um, but uh, we kept stalking, kept hunting hard. And again, early this morning, saw half a dozen sable, then a nice kudu bull with some females, and then uh, on down the fillets, we saw a group of uh, wildebeest. And uh, we got out of the truck and stalked them and had a decent shot that I probably would have taken, but uh, Chris probably wisely said, let's hold off, pull back. And uh, we kept uh, stalking them. We saw them two or three more times. And then uh, Chris put us right on them. They were down in one of these fillets that was only probably 75 yards away. And there was a herd of maybe 25, I'm guessing. And this one, fortunately, was on the closest side of the herd to us versus the back side, which has normally been the case. Knock it down immediately. We, we have been stalking it or tracking it for the last hour. But it's definitely been worth it. It's been a great hunt. The animal is beautiful. Uh, it adds to our blue wildebeest that we shot in South Africa. Uh, we initially saw them on an open area, tracked them through the Miombo back down to the water. He's walking away. Like Tim says, you know, he's putting a bit of the pressure on there, saying let's get him. So we took a, a bit of a dodgy shot on him, but it worked out well. He hit him good enough that he slowed down. We've been following for, like Tim says, about an hour and a bit. He's bleeding quite a lot. The shot's gone in at the shoulder and, and the bullet's lodged here in his neck. A very nice bull. Um, got up, uh, spotted him from about 80 yards off, floundering around a bit on the ground. Waited for him to get sore, then walked up and put another shot in him before he could leave. Um, but yeah, very nice bull, nice Tell old. Tell us about the type of this. Nice a wildebeest. Yeah. Uh, it's the only one in Tanzania. In the Salu. It's, it's, the, Salu. it's the only place you get this particular um, species of wildebeest is uh, in the Salu. You can see by the white chevron on the face. Once you get south of the Salu, they lose that white chevron. Up in northern Tanzania, you get the white bearded wildebeest. Uh, actually a bit better average, but better than average bull. This We normally shoot around 25, 26 inches. We've measured him now at 29. A nice old bull, you can see his horns are peeling back a little bit here and the tips are worn down. Uh, probably a little bit past his prime. Uh, he was with a couple of other bulls, but when we got on them, they joined into a big herd. Um, there were probably about 40 or 50 that ran off after the shot. Quite nice to see the wildebeest coming in here quite a bit now. But a good shot, we followed him, nice blood trail was left. We followed him, like I said, and found him laying down, got another shot in. And it's beautiful hide, I mean, it's almost like a stripe hide it's really pretty and uh it's going to look great well done tim thank you good shooting well thank, you, <laughs> thank you very much <laughs>
He said to be faster than Molly, and I overtook him within the first 10 yards. Right in the middle of the back and the shoulder in the middle of the back. <laughs> Went from the low. <laughs> Went from the low. Making a comeback. Can't well thank done. you guys enough. <laughs> that was great. It's nice to get the one they pointed out. Very nice cool under there. He's a great one. Well done. I appreciate it. Kept dragging me. <laughs> I appreciate it guys, that's fantastic. Yeah, well, Buffalo finally, down. last day. <laughs> In fact, Woody, Got when lucky. you come down the cut line road, just stop it's where beautiful. the junction is that goes, you know, that... As many, out, right? as many shots as I take, I just, you know, thought I'd just start throwing machine gun out there. Something was going to fall. Hey. Uh, Cliff had radioed us that they had seen or saw the tracks. Tracks. Saw tracks. So they saw tracks and uh, we stalked them, not even for that long, maybe 30 minutes mm -hmm. max, and uh, got up on a herd and then. Uh, Got up on him and neither one of these guys that were glassing hard saw a bull that was a shootable bull. And uh, we kind of then dropped back down and uh, picked up another herd or the main herd that we'd split. So we finally got on it, that herd several times. Uh, Chris did his unbelievable uh, wild buffalo mating call and had them coming out of the woods from for us. And uh, couldn't get a shot. Very difficult to get a shot within a herd of 30 to 50. Um, but we then came back around and uh, we got back up on them very quickly and had just a second to shoot and Cliff was perfect position to put the sticks up where I needed to be and had a good clear shot for a change. Fortunately heard the death bellow back over here and turned and uh, had it down here. So this ended up a great uh, trip, um, couldn't have had a better time. Uh, these guys worked their tail off the entire time. Uh, so it'll be good to get home to Morgan and Brooke and Jolie and Miriam uh, to go do some fun stuff now with all you guys. But I uh, had a great time here. Thanks for letting Dad come out on his own and do a, a private solo hunt, solo trip. Uh, a little selfish on my part, but it uh, turned out great. I'm ready to go back to work and get back after it. But we ended up great and uh, can't thank these guys enough. 
So, Cliff, once again, well done, thanks Tim. for a great yeah, very time. Good. Well you done. too, Chris. Congratulations. Both these guys worked their tail off. <laughs> Once again, yeah, nice. thank you, thank, thank you, you. Thank thank you. you. Still on the last day, headed back to camp, and uh, they saw this uh, exceptionally large reed buck, which we really hadn't seen one of this size in the two weeks we've been here. So we jumped out of the truck, took the 375 this time versus the 300, um, which was a little more accurate for me. Uh, we got up fairly close to him. Cliff again got up and uh, got right on him. He was in some thick woods, but uh, fortunately stepped out and dropped him in there and is really another beautiful animal. And I'll let Cliff say a little more about it since I'm not that knowledgeable on him. <laughs> yeah, Tim, uh, this is the common reed buck. There's several different types throughout, throughout Africa. Uh, you get the boho reed buck, uh, common reed buck, vol reed buck, uh, Nigerian boho reed buck. This is the common one. Um, for the Sulu, this is actually very nice. He's, you know, he's at least uh, 13 inches, uh, you know, nice old male. He's got this pulp in the front. But uh, yeah, very nice reed buck and very similar to your white tailed deer probably, you know, also with a little white tail right. here. And, right. But yeah, Beautiful. very nice and this is a hard shot, but well done. Beautiful animal. ending uh, everybody's been unbelievably polite and friendly and couldn't ask for a better t time with the entire staff here and uh, we'll come back and do it again next time with the whole family thank you cheers thank you Chris it's been a pleasure happy days